Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Fox and I'm a licensed psychologist in the state of Texas and today I wanted to answer the question about if you can change how you emotionally attach and connect to others even if you have narcissistic and or borderline personality disorder. And as we get into this, uh, we're going to talk about the different attachment patterns and how they relate to narcissistic personality disorder uh, and borderline personality disorder and the different attachment types that fit into to those different disorders and how to seek out a therapist that might be able to help you deal with these issues and of course how you can change your attachment pattern. But let's start first with what is attachment and how does it develop? So attachment is that emotional bond and connection that you have with someone else. This bond and connection can be with your mom, your dad, your brother, sister, cousin, friend, neighbor, even a stranger is part of your attachment, how you see the world and how you interact with it. And what happens is when we're very, very, very small is that we start to develop this attachment. And that's typically with our primary caregiver who hopefully provided us with a sense of safety and caring and understanding. And then as we got older, we started to interact with the world, right? When we went on playgrounds and when we went to school and when we had different interactive experiences with friends and play dates and stuff like that. So what happens is we develop what are called internal working models. And we all have these internal working models. And that's kind of our template for relationships, for connecting with others. And this is sort of how we see the world and how we interact with it. And that is a keen part and a heavy part of our attachment pattern. Now what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about the secure attachment type, the dismissing attachment type, the preoccupied attachment type, and the fearful attachment type. And I'm going to show you that if you tend to have traits or you fall into these categories of narcissistic or personality uh, disorders, which of these four attachment types are you most likely to have? Now it doesn't mean that because you're borderline you're going to have this specific type, it just means that there's a higher probability that you'll fall into one or possibly two of these categories. So let's get started. So when we talk about first, talk about secure attachment. And secure attachment, you tend to have that positive view of self and you have a positive view of others, right? So you're very hopeful and satisfied with yourself. Um, you're trusting and self-disclosing with others. So you're comfortable with who you are, comfortable in your own skin, and you're comfortable enough to trust others and think that they have your best interest at heart. The next attachment type that we'll talk about will be the dismissing attachment type. And these individuals tend to have a positive view of self, but a negative view of others. So they tend to be very hopeful and satisfied with who they are, but they're distrusting and non-disclosing of others. So while they're comfortable in their own skin, they don't really trust the world outside. And they're, a lot of times th these folks uh, tend to remove themselves from social situations out of either not caring about others or they give a presentation that they don't care about others and that there's a strong emphasis just on themselves because they're really happy with who they are but tend to not be trusting or caring about others. The next attachment type that we'll talk about is a preoccupied attachment type. And these individuals have a negative view of self and a positive view of others. So your preoccupied attachment type, they're hopeless and dissatisfied with who they are but they're trusting and self-disclosing of others. Now these folks are really not comfortable in their own skin and they prefer to connect with others to feel better. These are folks that are always sort of trying to have those relationships, have those connections because they feel like it will help resolve their internal issues. The last type that we're going to talk about is the fearful attachment type. And these individuals have a negative view of self and a negative view of others. They are hopeless and dissatisfied with who they are, and they are distrusting and non-disclosing to others. So these are individuals that are not comfortable in their own skin, while at the same time, they're not trusting others. So their inner world is disruptive, and their outer world is disruptive as well. So they're in this constant state of fear, anxiety, and concern about what's going on in the world, but not trusting themselves enough to assert themselves, feel like they have enough value in order to be impactful and get what they deserve 
in the world, even though they're not always sure what they deserve. So it's going after what you want when you don't know what you want. That's where these folks tend to fall. So as we go through this, typically we find that those with narcissistic personality disorder tend to fall into a dismissing attachment type. And for these folks, and it kind of fits if, if you think about it, if you remember back to, to what we just talked about, that positive view of self and that negative view of others, right? So they're, they're seemingly very happy with who they are, but they're very uncertain uh, and don't, don't trust others. So these folks, even though they do uh, feel satisfied with themselves, they're hurt easily, they become frustrated easily, uh, they may um, pretend to not have a lot of value towards others, um, so they tend to act out, become very frustrated in, in some situations as well. And when we talk about borderline personality disorder, now these individuals can fall into uh, one of two categories or a mixture of both. And these two categories are your preoccupied attachment type and your fearful attachment type. Now, some individuals that have borderline personality disorder fall into that preoccupied attachment type. And these are folks that are preoccupied with the relationships, preoccupied with others trying to make them feel okay and feel better. Now your fearful attachment type, these are individuals that are uncertain about themselves and the world around them, but want a connection. They want to connect, but they're afraid of having that connection and being hurt. So your borderline and your narcissistic personality disordered individuals tend to struggle with attachment quite a bit. And what happens in, in treatment when, when I work with individuals that uh, have these personality disorders, what we find is, is that as we go through the process of treatment, we start to impact a lot of these attachment issues. And what happens in these attachment issues is that you tend to go back and in some ways act out some of those early experiences. So the question becomes, can we change our attachment pattern? Can we change how we connect to others? We actually can. And there's actually research that supports this. Uh, I, I put a citation of a research study that was done with individuals that have borderline personality disorder who were able to move further, further along and closer to a secure attachment pattern through therapy, through working on these issues. And that therapy needs to involve what I call working on core issues. Those are those underlying issues. And if you think about those attachment patterns that we just discussed, those are core issues. That's central to how we see the world, how we interact with it. And I think if, if we're in treatment and if we're working on it, addressing those issues, being aware of those issues, and how they, our attachment impacts our beliefs, our approach to the world, our feelings, our thoughts, our patterns, we can start to change those. We can build this sense of confidence and understanding in ourselves and the world around us and interact in a healthier and more effective way by reworking our attachment pattern and changing those internal working models so that the world works with us instead of against us. And this is possible to, to do this. Uh, I've worked some clients have have been on the extreme end of borderline personality disorder as well as narcissistic personality disorder. And after a period of time in, in treatment, period of time was two to four years, we were able to adjust their attachment pattern where they felt confident enough to approach the world, assert themselves, manage their own behaviors, and have successful relationships with family members if they were appropriate, or with loved ones, or marriages, or whatever it may be. Because individuals that fall uh, further along on that secure attachment, they tend to have better relationships, they achieve more in the, in the workplace and in school, so it is possible to change these things. It is possible to change your attachment pattern. And there's even research that can support this. If you're interested in, in working with a therapist who can do this, what, what I encourage you to do is look a little bit into the therapist that, that, that you are interested in working with and see if they do have a history of working with personality disorders. Do they know uh, the conceptualization of personality disorders? Do they understand that attachment is likely to be a major issue in the treatment process about um, those factors of attachment that will be present in, um, in, in the treatment process? So it's important that you find someone who knows how to help you move through this 
and also recognizing that it is going to take effort on your part on effort of the client who does follow along the narcissistic and or borderline uh, personality disorder continuum so that it is possible for them to do things differently. It is possible to remit a lot of those, those traits of narcissistic and or borderline personality disorder. And it is possible to move closer and have a greater sense of secure attachment. I want to thank you very much for your time. Please uh, subscribe to my channel if you're interested and please leave any, any comments that you may have. Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye-bye.